In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a grouped frequency distribution using Excel. One approach will be a very basic approach, it's like almost manual. The other one is fully technical by applying the data analysis tool pack in Excel. So first, let's go with the more elaborate way of doing it. In this case, I think we'll have more understanding of what we have and what what we're trying to, to achieve. So given the temperature in Fahrenheit for 50 cities in the United States, we're trying to convert that into a grouped frequency distribution. So my first or my starting point will be to identify what is the minimum value in this group, uh, group of uh, observations. So we go with the min, open bracket, highlight the entire range. You can type it if you wish from A2 until A51, and this should give me the answer for the min. So the min is equal to 100. Notice the range is A2 to A51. Here, instead of highlighting, I can simply type it. I'm going to go max A2 because it's still the same range until A51. And this should give me the maximum value. Next, what is the range between the min and the max? And the range is the difference between the high and the low. So equal, and then I click on the cell for the max minus the cell for the min. So I have a range of 34. Number of classes, we don't have a hard solid rule here. We simply have guidelines that do not go below five classes and do not exceed 20. If you go below five, either you don't have that much information or you're putting too much into the same category, into the same group. Over 20 will be very hard uh, to make any decisions, any sensible decisions. I, th I think for the number of values that we have in our course, it will suffice uh, to stay as close to the five, six, seven as possible. So again, it's a guideline. It is not... Uh, something that you have to do or you must do that is not the case so let's decide five six seven how many classes should we define uh, divide our values into let's choose six so we have six and now to identify or to define the class width we take the range and divide that by the number of classes whatever answer you get even if you have 5.1 or 5.01, you must round up. And the way to round it up, you can visually do it, mentally do it, or rely on Excel uh, to do that for you. So we go round up, and then round up what? I click on the value that I wish to round up, comma, and to how many digits? I want it to the nearest whole number. That means no decimals, so zero decimals and then close the bracket. This will make it six. Nice thing about it, if you do it this way, should you decide later on to change the number of classes from six to five, for example, you've got your answer automatically figured out. You wanna make it seven classes, then you know what the number is gonna be. So let's stick to the seven, okay, keep it seven. Now, the lower limit we start basically with, I'm gonna copy it, I'm not gonna type it, is my minimum. Enter. It's 100. The class width is basically the difference between the lower limit of the first class and the lower limit of the next class interval. So here I'm going to say it's equal to, I have the 100, my starting point, plus the class width, which I'm going to add to every subsequent class. And this one is a fixed value, so I'm going to fix it with the F4 um, function button and enter. So the lower limit of the first class is 100. The lower limit of the next class interval is 105. If the lower limit of the next class interval is 105, it means I should stop here at 104. And let me repeat. So 105, the next one is 110. The next one is 110. 110, it means the previous class, we should have stopped at 109. Add another one. Notice I always do the lower limit of the next class before I do the upper limit of the previous class. So 115, so I have to stop here at 14. 
and I continue until I create uh, the uh, seven classes because I decided it's, it's going to be a seven. And actually here I can do it in just one step. So after I created this one, I can copy it. And here I do have a pattern, so I can also copy that. Notice the minimum is 100, maximum is 134. That should cover all the values I have in my table, so that should be enough. Boundaries, to create the lower boundary, it's equal, by definition, the lower limit minus 0 0.5, because it's a whole number, so it's the plus minus 0 0.5 to go from limits to boundaries. And for the upper boundary, I take the upper limit and add to it 0 0.5. Once you have these two created, then I can drag to the rest of the table. So this gives me all the lower boundaries, all the upper boundaries. The class mark is simply the midpoint between the lower limit and the upper limit, or the midpoint between the lower boundary and the upper boundary. Either or, you get the same answer. So we're going to go equal, open bracket, because I'm adding up this one, plus the second value. I'm going to go with the limits because the numbers are easier to deal with. We don't have any fractions in them. And then divide by 2. This is how I get the midpoint between any two values. Of course, I'll have the 1 or 2 and simply drag it to the rest of the table. Does it make sense? Yeah, inspect it, at least mentally, see. Um, always check your answer. Do they make sense before you proceed? Here I have the class between 130 to 134. So is the midpoint 132? Absolutely. So I am okay. With the frequency, it's going to be very cumbersome if I'm going to go through the table and count. Well, how many values I have between 100 and 104? It's going to be tough. Do we have an Excel function? Yes. It's a bit um, difficult, but let's... not difficult. Um, many steps in it. So just pay attention and let's take it one step at a time and I think you'll do fine in here. So I'm counting. I'm counting but I have many conditions. Before we use the count if because it was a single condition here I have two conditions. What are these two conditions? The two conditions are number one I'm counting all the values from 100 and above up to and including 104. So the, what are you counting? I'm counting the range. So first I have to highlight I have to highlight this entire range and make sure I fix it once I wish to drag. Now look at the syntax. This is very tricky. So comma, then the quotation marks, and I want greater than or equal to close the quotation mark. And then this shift number seven, shift and number seven, that's the uh, and symbol. Greater than what? Greater than or equal to 100. Now I'm going to repeat for the second condition. So again, I'm going to highlight my entire selection. Fix it with F4, comma. Quotation mark, now with the second condition, which is less than or equal, close the quotation marks, the AND symbol, and what my next value is here. Now we close the bracket. So it's going to count. It's going to look at this whole table and count all the values that are 110. D10 is 100, uh, 100 sorry. 100 and over, up to and including 104. Let's see what the value is. So I have a value of 2. Notice with this, the way I've done it, all I had to do just create the function only once. Let me highlight it again so you can see it. I'll make it in bigger font. So if you want to see the detail, of the function. I'm counting. This is the range. What is the condition? Greater than or equal to. Which value? The one located in D10. That is 100. Then I'm looking into the same range and counting all those less than or equal to E10, which is 104. So in that category, in these two ranges, the 
um, count was two. I have only two values that are between 100 and 104 inclusive. Since I have it done this way, let me put it in the middle and now copy it. Notice it's given me all the values for the rest of the table. Did it count everything? I started with 50 values. Do I have 50 values? So if I click here, 50, absolutely. So what we call this, this is a grouped frequency distribution. Why do we say grouped? Because in each class interval, I have a range of values. It's not a single value. So the first one is 100 to 104, the second one 105 to 109. So again, each one is a class interval. And in each class interval, I, I have a range of values. Do we have a shortcut in, in Excel? Yeah, but not like a magic button and suddenly everything is done for you. You still have to do the work until the all of this you still have to do. <laughs> you still have to do manually. You still have to create the upper boundaries. Let me highlight it in a different color. So all of these steps you must do. And once you arrive at this point, the function in Excel that allows you to calculate all these frequencies and create the histogram automatically can be found under the data and we go to the data analysis if this one is not installed then you need to have it installed so that will be a separate uh, instruction so we click on this one and we choose the histogram histogram and we say okay now the input range I will highlight a2 to A51. Bin range stands for the upper boundaries. So we will highlight the values, in my case G10 to G16. Let me repeat, bin range is the same as the upper boundary. Uh, do I want it in a new sheet? Yes, let's call this grouped frequency distribution and I want the chart output which is the histogram and click OK and look what I have created let me make this bigger the table compare the frequencies this is the bin and that is the uh, upper boundary and these are the frequencies exactly the same as those we counted in here to eight but here I use a different Excel function. Here it was done automatically for me. And look at the histogram, although technically this is not a histogram because I have gaps in between, but I can uh, cover that up. Um, so to remove the gaps in between, first let me remove the frequency. Right click as we did before, format data series, remove the gaps with the fill, make them different colors and say, okay. You know by now how to change the titles on the x-axis, on the y-axis, and for the graph itself. So this is the histogram of the temperature example that I started with. I'll see you in the next video.